So I used to work with somebody that was actually a vice president for the Federal Reserve at one of the branches in Texas. I'm not going to say which one. But uh, I used to get into a, a lot of conversations with him specifically about the dollar. And I'm a lot more skeptical now than I used to be. The dollar is the way that it is, obviously, because of many circumstances and situations. It's, it's not just the overlord elitists that keep it up at that level. It's also the consumers. You know, People like you and I that are going out buying stuff are also making an impact on keeping the dollar strong. And if it does get to the point to where it might collapse, maybe that's possibly why this Jade Helm situation is taking place because they're getting prepared for that. But I've been hearing for years that the dollar is going to collapse for at least 15 years now, yes. and it's stronger than ever. So, you know, how how is it making a? Aren't we making it more likely to cause the dollar to collapse if we're saying how bad it is and how worthless it is? I used to listen to Alex Jones, and I thought this guy was just great. But to be honest with you, the more that I listen to him now, I feel as if he's shilling for interests of his own, not for the people like I used to feel that he was for. So, you know, they used to he used to have on. What was his name that said, oh, the, do the dollar's useless. Why don't you just throw Max Kaiser, I think it was, was, then, oh, yeah, the, the dollar's useless. You can't do anything with it. Yet, if I got a million bucks, there's a lot of stuff I can go out right now and buy with it. When I had uh, 100 rounds of silver and I certainly couldn't go out and buy merchandise at the store with those things, I had to find somebody on Craigslist to buy them back. So, you know, don't you think that the dollar is actually pretty strong? Yeah, right Right now it's surprisingly strong. I I, I said that I follow CNN to, to get the you know brainwashing news that they throw out, but what I generally follow is CNBC, the financial news. <laughs> see what's going on because as as you see the investors moving their money around, you know it's not, not that I have any stocks and it's not that I have any, any any wealth involved, but it's a barometer, and and that's all it is. So when I see gas price, oil prices going up, gold prices falling, dollar prices going up, or, or when I saw the euro reverse and come down to to uh, what was it, uh, 98 cents for a euro? I was like, seriously? How does the dollar have that much strength? Now, I've heard the bond markets is the one to watch. The lean indicator is the bond market. Would you agree? Well, yeah, you have to watch for money shifting. And the bond market, market I, I don't really follow it all that much, but I've seen lately, the, the past couple of days, they've had some nice gains. They seem, if I recall correctly, they had a nice gain this morning. Yep. Uh, I, I didn't watch. I, I don't really pay attention. I generally look for the indicators of oil, gold, silver, the dollar, and and, and the overall stock market performance. And, and now, what does that tell me? Not much. It just tells me how stable things are. When I start seeing sell-offs, a two hundred dollar sell-off in the market is nothing. The market's at what nineteen, eighteen hundred? Yeah. I mean, eighteen thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, it's never been in this territory before. But and well, and now when this collapse happens, we all agree that it's going to happen eventually, right? Well, you know, my, my son said made an argument today. He said you can't keep on pumping money into a system and expect it to continue to to do well. Sooner or later, you have to have a reset. Now, and, and that's happened all through history. Look how many times the market has reset. We think back to 1929 as the great stock market crash, but it's reset a lot of times since then. But what are the driving factors that that are behind what's going on now? You see, we're financing war. Ooh, that's a moneymaker there. Oh, yeah. And what do you mean we're financing war? Well, here's something that everybody missed. You see, what happened last September? The United Nations voted, the General Assembly of the United Nations voted to end extremism. Now, if, if anybody paid attention to this, all the Arab countries were all jumping up and down. All, all the leaders were excited, separating Islam from extremists. And, and, and you know, what we see with the, and this was all based on ISIS. Where did ISIS come out from? Huh. ISIS came on the scene after the 10 days of Mandela. And we got the 10 days of Mandela after Comet Ison, the greatest comet that ever that, that never appeared in a civilization's lifetime, was obviously destroyed. It was, and, and the tell is, I was just looking at this online the other day. I, I was looking up something, and, and here's, here's a, a, a a laid out semi, uh, set of photographs that show ice on as it comes around the sun. Now, I watched this in real time. And as soon as it came out from behind the sun, I said, that comb is blowing the wrong way. It's supposed to be blowing 90 degrees away from the sun, no matter where it's located. And, and it's blowing at, at, at uh, 45. What's going on here? <laughs> you know, you, this thing is supposed to be pointing the, the direct opposite uh, uh, of the sun, no matter where it's traveling. And, and here, the thing's making a 45 degree turn. What's going on here? Why is the, com the, the coma of the comet blowing to the left when it should be blowing straight out? So you're saying they blew it up? 
it disappeared, didn't it? It did. No, you're right. It did. I remember it just it just vanished. I remember. And what, it, and, and what day was that? Oh, that was Hanukkah, the first day of Hanukkah. And what did we get instead of Comet Ison? Uh, the ten days of Mandela, the the the, the, the night the night of Malta, subject to the Pope. Uh, or in servitude of the Pope and subject to the Vatican, the, the the man who died twice, the first time on June 26th and the second time on December 5th. What, are you kidding me? And, 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 and that whole thing lasts 10 days, which is tied into a lunar alignment of the Vortrecker Monument. Go look that one up, which is in South Africa. And it's the he gets interned the day before the alignment, and, and the, the lunar alignment with the Vortrecker uh, uh, Monument also matches where Comet Ison would have been on December 16th, and, and when all the, the, the Mayan folks turned around and went back and said, oh, why didn't it happen on December 21st? They said, oh, because we forgot to carry the zero year. <laughs> it should have been December 16th. On the, the evening of December 16th, the, the Mayan feathered snake god should have made itself clear in the evening sky. It would have looked like a giant exclamation point standing right above Venus. But it was gone. And then we got immediately thereafter the, the, the revolution in Ukraine turned bloody. We got an Ebola outbreak in Africa, one that had world consequences. Yeah, total behind. psyop. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, come on. If it was a real situation where everybody was getting Ebola and it was as contagious as they say it was, would all be either in some type of confinement right now, hiding from it, or would be dead. Yeah, but it was all a psyop. Now, now, keep that in mind. What else did we get, though? Uh, it, it didn't happen in the month of December. It happened on the 3rd of January that all of a sudden this little-known group called ISIS reared its nasty head and became the, the enemy of the entire world and since then has expanded throughout the Middle East and Africa. In well, let's talk about spots. You know, Peter, you know this better than most people. Let's talk about ISIS and who's funding them, who they really are, because every other article that you read in the conspiracy realms or even in a lot of the mainstream media now is talking about how ISIS is the biggest threat and they've got briefcase nukes and we've really got to watch out for them because they're going to go through the Mexican border and get us in our sleep. <laughs> hey, but you know, uh, I just wanted to shift gears because I know, Rex, uh, you wanted to talk about Jade Helm, and I think that's... Probably uh, definitely uh, something that we need to cover here tonight. Uh, just want to remind you folks that we, we will be taking a break at the bottom of the hour. So, uh, uh, Peter, what, what, what is your thoughts on ISIS? Uh, do you think it is a major problem? Or is it just... Uh, it, it, here's the thing about ISIS. It, 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 there's a little known fact, and it's amazing. Uh, I, I wound up reporting on this September 10th. Trust me, September 10th, 2014. I was like... Where's this ISIS thing coming from? Because when Hillary Clinton was still Secretary of State, she made a statement saying that the rebels in Syria would be well-funded. And I'm like, really? I didn't I won't say the second word, but whatever. Uh, and, and those words have just stuck in my brain. So when this whole ISIS, now when you look at the podium on the, at the 10 days of Mandela, you see a phoenix rising from a pyramid interesting a symbol of isis and then um, within the month we get isis or within a month we get isis come on now where did the funding connect these guys came out of syria but where did the funding come from so i started doing a search on isis i came across a very interesting website called the integral uh systems uh, integrated systems so uh, the acronym is i i s i s they have served that they are a guns for hire mercenary company made up of special forces and retired CIA agents. They have a office, they have offices all around the world, but they have an office at 1700 Pennsylvania Avenue in the in the Ronald Reagan building, literally across from the White House. I started talking about so, this and posting it. Go ahead. Peter, I know, and I'm so glad you brought this up again because I remember you told us that before. And for many of you that haven't had an opportunity to listen to the last time we talked to Peter, you brought that up. So, do you think that it's one and the same? Do you think that these turkeys that are out there, you know, beheading people supposedly and doing all of these terrorist acts are really the ISIS, the same ones that you discovered? I don't know, but they changed their name and logo. You know who uh, who else had? <laughs> Seriously, ISIS. The ISIS organization located in Washington, D.C. at the 17, at 1700 Pennsylvania Avenue in the Ronald Reagan building changed their name and their logo somewhere b between the time I started reporting on them in September and when I checked about a month ago. Hello. 
I was yeah. also going to add that uh, <laughs> Verizon. And I'm still alive. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I'm still alive. This is a murder from this is a murder for hire company. Um, this is a coincidence. I bring this to light, and they change their logo, and I'm still breathing. Good. <laughs> I love it. No, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I was just going to bring up Verizon Wireless also had a pay system that they also named ISIS, and they uh, changed it too. But could it also just be this, the fact that ISIS is an Egyptian deity that's been around for thousands of years, so many entities or people or organizations already know the name ISIS, and they might just choose to pick ISIS because of certain correlations. You know, there's many businesses out there today, for example, one in particular, Starbucks, that has the Egyptian deity Osiris on there, if I'm not mistaken, and the uh, Sidzil that they use on their signs is the Egyptian deity as well. Some people feel that in the occult realms, that helps manifest their desires if it harmonizes with their synchronicity, their vibrational frequencies. What do you think about that, Peter? I chose my God. My God's Yahweh. Yahweh is the zero dimension which controls every other dimension within the multiverse. It's not some alien or interdimensional God wannabe. So they chose their gods. Let's go back to the exodus of Egypt. This was a battle between Yahweh and the gods of Egypt. I'm glad you brought that up. See, when you go back to the 10 days of Mandela, remember all the presidents were there, all, the, all these world dignitaries, over 90 of them, and, and they're standing next to this crazy guy who's signing in a language that nobody knows, that, that nobody can understand what I'm talking about when I say nobody. Everyone who understands sign language, whether it be American or from some other country, no one of the experts, including my mother, could understand what in the world he was saying. Uh, my, my, my mother is a certified American sign language translator. She has been all my life. <laughs> so I think she might know. <laughs> What's this guy talking about? I have no clue. Occasionally you see a sign that's familiar, but and then he then after uh, nobody knows who in the world he is, although he stood next to all of these world dignitaries. He, they they get they get him out of there and they interview him. And he says, "Oh, while I was doing this, I saw all of these angels flying around the stadium." Really? So you were invoking a, a this what this was a satanic ritual that went on for ten days, and they were invoking the gods. Yes. That's exactly what they were doing. I did a whole a, a whole video on this with Alfred Weber in both when it was going on uh, in and then about uh, I think in March of 2014 there's the follow-up video to it. But but yeah, we we talked about this quite extensively. But here we are. Uh, uh, that was the setup for, for the for the blood moons and the tetrad blood moons. I said our world is a very different place by the time that the tetrad blood moons are over. And they're over in September. So I used to work with somebody that was actually a vice president for the Federal Reserve at one of the branches in Texas. I'm not going to say which one. But uh, I used to get into a, a lot of conversations with him specifically about the dollar. And I'm a lot more skeptical now than I used to be. The dollar is the way that it is, obviously, because of many circumstances and situations. It's, it's not just the overlord elitists that keep it up at that level it's also the consumers you know people like you and i that are going out buying stuff are also making an impact on keeping the dollar strong and if it does get to the point to where it might collapse maybe that's possibly why this jade helm situation is taking place because they're getting prepared for that but i've been hearing for years that the dollar is going to collapse for at least 15 years now yes. and it's stronger than ever so you know how how is it making a aren't we making it more likely to cause the dollar to collapse if we're saying how bad it is and how worthless it is i used to listen to alex jones and i thought this guy was just great but to be honest with you the more that i listen to him now i feel as if he's shilling for interests of his own not for the people like i used to feel that he was for so you know they used to he used to have on what was his name that said oh the, do the dollar's useless why don't you just throw max kaiser i think it was was then oh yeah the the dollar's useless you can't do anything with it yet if i got a million bucks there's a lot of stuff i can go out right now and buy with it when i had a uh, hundred rounds of silver and i certainly couldn't go out and buy merchandise at the store with those things i had to find somebody on craigslist to buy them back so you know don't you think that the dollar is actually pretty strong yeah right right now it's surprisingly strong i I, I said that I follow CNN to, to get the you know brainwashing news that they throw out. But what I generally follow is CNBC, the financial news. <laughs> see what's going on because as right. as you see the investors moving their money around, you know it's not, not that 